yeah ah good morning guys good morning once again and uh, uh, to start with uh, let's first discuss what is the agenda for today's discussion okay so probably we'll uh, try and cover all this topic and uh, it will be starting from uh, what is cross validation okay what is train and test data set so we we saw linear regression okay and today we'll see logistic regression so let's start this first sequence wise you'll see what is logistic in detail logistic regression and implementation okay yeah logistic implementation we'll see and uh, we'll try and see what is trained uh, trained set, data set and test data set we'll see what is cross validation and if time permits we'll discuss a little bit about uh, clustering algorithm okay fine so uh, guys regarding logistic regression uh, let me first let take you through one small pvt here it is okay so we have seen what is linear regression we have seen what is linear regression right and we saw a little bit of logistic regression but so since it was confusing so let me start with a very uh, beginning okay like let's start with the introduction and then we'll see uh like how it is differing from uh linear regression okay so logistic regression as the name says it is again one of the one of one of kind of regression okay and it, it which is prefixed with logistic okay so if you read the definition from a regression analysis used for predict this is logistic regression is a regression analysis used for prediction of discrete variable so here lies the difference so if you see the proper definition so prediction of discrete variables using a mix of continuous and discrete predictors okay so discrete variables means like you you have uh, like categorical variable here okay that is that is discrete variable using a mix of continuous and discrete predictors so your independent variable so since it says predictors so that is independent variable can be continuous or discrete okay that is as as like it is it can be continuous as or discrete but the prediction uh, or i can say the y variable okay that needs to be discrete variable that is the thing so to have a, uh, you can look it like this way let me open one if i have logistic regression okay so if i have y is equal to some equation let's say uh alpha let's say mx plus c okay so your x can be continuous or discrete okay or like linear regression where your x needs to be continuous here your x can be continuous or discrete and y needs to be discrete this is the thing so there there is x and there is y and there is x so your x can be continuous or discrete or categorically can right but your y needs to be categorical 
and uh, good example of this what we have discussed last session as well let's say uh, a football match will happen or not okay whether a students will be promoted to the next uh, session or not okay such questions where you have where the answers will all always been two options yes or no true false one zero okay so that means this answer is itself categorical and that that signifies that the uh, like that signifies y is categorical that is predict, uh, in dependent variables predictor and you will have to use logistic regression okay let's let's move ahead and see some more definition there okay so this is what you need, you can hard, uh, remember and like keep it in your like a note keep a note of it that this is what logic regression is and the proper definition okay now let's move ahead used when the research objective is focused on whether or not an event occurred rather than when it occurred okay so like if you know if you need to know any event that will occur or not so you have only two chances either yes or no and the result which logistic regression will give you okay the it, it is in terms of probability okay so let's say you have some uh, some event will occur today it will rain or not okay, based on the historical data you have you need to predict today it will rain or not so the output which you will get from logistic regression that is the value of y will be a probability so it will get you will get 0 0.2 or 0 0.8 so if it is approaching towards 0 that means it's no if it's approaching towards 1 that means it is it will happen it is true okay that first it says instead of building up so this is very important instead of building a predictive model for y okay directly the approach model logs odd logs odds means like logistic regression logs of log of odds okay is the name is logistic or why the name is logistic there's a definition given here <coughs> fine let's move ahead so your dependent variable that is why, as I said here in the uh, in the white white sheet, the dependent variable is your categorical variable always. Okay, the independent variable that you have that can be continuous or categorical. So if I just compare it with linear regression for better clarity, so what it is linear regression so if i see here y1 is equal to m1 let m be like this mx1 plus c1 let's say this is a different equation and here you find that your x1 is continuous and your y1 is also continuous both x1 and y1 is continuous that means it it is not logistic it is linear clear now let's see your further difference and your independent variable can be continuous or categorical that we know examples default credit card okay so if bank let's say sbi wants to analyze whether a customer will default okay or which customer will default or not so default means like either a customer will default or they will not default straight away or you can say either a customer will pay his bill or he will not pay his bill so there is nothing in between okay so that is one example of logistic regression and implementation okay a response will be a response basically uh, it it is uh, the 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 one which you will see here will be uh, data 
of direct marketing. So let me open that data set. Okay, the example which we'll see in this last generation today. Fine. <clears throat> so let's see response. Okay, so uh, this response um, is a direct mailer. So if, the, if a company, you must be receiving lots of mail in your inbox, right? So what, what happens if a company, let's say uh, Union Bank of India or Flipkart, for example, Flipkart sends you a promotion mail in your inbox. So what will happen? There are, there are only two probabilities. Either we'll, you'll respond to that mail or you'll not respond to that mail. Okay, so what does responding mean? It does not mean replying to his mail that, yeah, I'm, I'm going to accept your offer and buy something. No. So response means like you'll open the mail or you'll not open the mail. So if you open the mail, Flipkart was successful uh, choosing you as a customer to send a mail because you responded to it. If you are not opening the mail, that means that mail, uh, that effort went in like waste. It went into waste. There was uh, no return to it. Okay, but you cannot do in between. You open the mail half and you just checked it and you remained half of closed. No, it does not happen. Okay, so that again, the output here is uh, like it is bivariate. It only have two values. It's not uh, continuous or univariate like a linear regression. Okay, so just try and understand uh, and build a, you can gauge a difference between linear and logistic. So it will be very easy to understand when you get a, when you get a problem statement. Okay. Uh, like let's say a case study or a problem statement uh, then you need to gauge like what it is and how uh, like is it, a, it will you go for a linear regression or logic regression so it all depends on one what output you are trying to formulate okay based on the formulation of a output you need to decide yeah like output is bivariate it, 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 can, it can have only two values okay so prob probably you need to go for logistic regression and if you have a uh, like continuous uh, output like let's say uh, like it will be it will give it can give you any value your y it your y can attain any value okay the example which you saw in linear regression was direct marketing and sales okay if a person invests on marketing so what sales you can accept so it, it can range from any value from zero to any value so it is uh, uh, y is your continuous so it will be linear regression okay fine i guess it is clear now let's move ahead. Another example: acquisition of a customer. Whether you'll be able to, uh, like, as a company, let's say I'm a company, okay, I'm owner of one sub company. So I, whether I'll be successful in acquiring you as my customer, or I'll not be uh, successful in acquiring my customer. Okay. So the best example of this will be: uh, you get SMSs right in your uh, mobile, like. Uh, like this is uh, today's uh, offer in big uh, like pantaloons. Uh, use your pay, PayPal, PayPal points and purchase something. So if you actually purchased something, so that means they were successful. If you have not, if you were not, uh, if you did not buy anything, that means you were not, they were not successful. Okay. Yeah, this is purchase again, same example. So this all are categorical outcomes. That is what the whole point is. Whatever you see here, the response is always bivariate. So it has only two output. Either it will happen or it will not happen. So categorical outcome, that means logistic regression. Okay. Any questions, guys, so far? Yeah, so uh, there's one question like X variable can also be categorical. I said yes. Uh, the uh, answer is you need to understand that X can attain any value. It can be continuous or categorical. Okay, that means you can yeah, when you are building a model. So it sh it should not be like you see or if all the variable that that, that is all the independent variable is. 
uh, continuous, then you cannot implement or all the continue all the independent variable is categorical, then you cannot implement logic. No, that is not the case because it's in our hand how to manipulate the independent variable and convert it into a continuous or categorical variable. So we have that uh, power in our hand. Okay, that exists. Fine, let's move ahead. And see types of logic regression. Types of logic regression means uh, it, like we what you will use when you when you write a model and when you build a model. So there are few types of logic regression like logit, probit. What you will use? Okay. So <clears throat> so there are binary logic regression. Okay, this is and this is like major. It covers the majority of it. Okay, uh, used when response variable is binary or dichotomous. So they they both are same binary or dichotomous. It has only two outcomes: good, bad, yes, no, true, false, one, zero. Okay, such kind of thing. So this is called binary logic. So ordered logic is like uh, you'll get the output in order, and you need to convert that into a binary. Okay, so example will be used when response variable has more than two outcomes and the outcome can be ordered in a meaningful way like high, medium, okay, any category. So this again a category. So you get a example, I'll just tell you. So you got, let's say, this is the range of outcome that you have got in your logic regression. Okay, so it, it might seem a continuous. Okay, but not, but no, you can convert this. Let's say, so if we'll sort this into from highest to lowest, now I sorted this into from highest to lowest, and the outcome which you were, you were supposed to predict was uh, the weather. Okay, weather of a uh, like one month weather for a particular city, and that weather will be what. Okay, if you do, if you do, if you want to make it continuous variable, let it be like this way. It, it gives the exact number. But if you want to make it categorical, and it is the output of your logic logistic regression, so you can make a range as you've discussed. So from twenty, from twenty to twenty five. So it it will be termed as high. Okay, and when it is uh, fifteen to 20 less than 20 okay it will termed as it will termed as medium when it is from uh, let's say 10 to 15 it will be termed as uh, moderate and when it is like 1 to 10 so let's term it as low so so what happened you converted the entire data set the entire output of yours uh, which seemed to be continuous okay and but you wanted to, you wanted to have a categorical range so you converted that into a range, medium high moderate low so this happens very frequently and we'll see this in our example as well in our today okay so this is a two type of output you have okay and what is multinomial that is that comes from uh, like basically it is a you'll see very rarely uh, this okay so it is uh, just read it used when response variable has more than two outcomes again okay and the outcome cannot be ordered in any manner so whenever you have output and that is nominal okay uh, what i mean is like when you in input a nominal variable in your model okay uh, what and i am sure that you know what is nominal okay we discussed it in last class so the, the categorical variable has two types one is ordinal and nominal okay ordinal is something which can be ordered in some re, uh, some particular order so uh, let for example this okay this is uh, again a categorical variable but if you order it in some sequence let's say high medium moderate and low so it makes sense high means something which is having a high magnitude medium is like, like something which is having lower magnitude but nominal is example uh, like let's say male female so either you you write male female or female male so the order does not impact does not have any impact on the output so that is nominal okay 
so that is the difference so when the when the uh, input variable input categorical variable is nominal so your output will be multinomial logit <coughs> okay this is a theoretical difference and this is the three types of outputs you will output you will get binary ordered and multinomial fine so let's move ahead and quickly let's uh, theoretically we'll see one uh, implementation uh, where we'll discuss uh, what is good example uh, where logistic logistic regression is used a lot okay now yeah so consider a sample of customers who are granted loans by a bank and over time have either repaid a loan in full or have defaulted so this is a case study so what you have you have a data set and uh, like you are given a data set and you need to probably predict or build a model which will help bank okay in return that to understand like which set of customers from the given set will default okay that is they will not pay the loan back okay or who are the customers who will pay okay so any like like it is very common that bank always want people or who those customers who will repay their loan okay who will not default so that is their perfect customers now just read it the bank wants to identify factors that can help predict so factors means your variable okay so bank wants to collect or understand all the variables that will that can help predict the likelihood of future customers defaulting okay so it can either refuse the loan at the grant stage or better securitize grant amount or tenure or interest rate etc to make the loan repayable okay so uh, this is the gist of it you have a data set and let's say you are a bank now uh, that data set is nothing but a set of customers okay and para and few parameters of it so customers and few details of it like uh, their previous uh, loan history uh, period repayment history then what amount they took what interest they paid what in how many tenure they paid what was the emi okay so all those things that you have basically this is the data you have when you have a uh, like this kind of uh, bank bank uh, data okay so now using this variable what you need to do is you need to put, uh, build a model and uh, just reiterate things that your why is whether a bank will or whether a customer will pay or not so it's obviously a, a binary output okay so pay or not again uh, if, if i ask you in which re region it will fall binary ordered or uh, multinomial so what you will be telling uh, what you can say if i take that bank statement bank case study and put it here and i ask you what will be the among these three what will be the output who can answer this yeah so so multinomial no uh, no no it will be a binary the output will be binary so whether a customer will pay or not okay okay so let's move ahead fine <clears throat> now let's move to our r we'll go back to r r okay <clears throat> so what data we'll see today is your is the data set yeah so i have this data set okay and uh, how many rows it has it has 1000 rows okay so we have 1000 entries and what is the data set data set is it's a direct marketing data set i guess i guess i have sent it to you uh, in a mail so there's a company 
let's say a flip card this is a flip card data just as you it, it did some marketing and that marketing is direct marketing they have they either have send a mail okay or sms or any sort of other marketing strategy they have opted and there's a data set so what is a data set old like this there's, there's an age there's gender own home uh, whether they own home or they stay in rented house okay that data they have then uh, whether they are married people or unmarried single okay then you have location uh, like like what uh, where is the location so it, it, let's say uh, let's assume so a case will be uh, this is a pantaloons data okay uh, pantaloons and they have they are doing a marketing so you get a sms or you get a call or you get a email from a pantaloon okay so some particular location say let's say kagur gachi or something they are doing uh, the promotion so they will when they uh, get the data of a set of people who are staying in th in that particular location let's say in a radius of 4 5 kilometers okay and they got all the detail of that cost uh, of the of the population who is staying in 4 to 5 kilometers and they want to do marketing so they started doing marketing they have just categorized like they have categorized whether uh, the customer how far they are okay based on the kilometers if they are 2 kilometer away so they are like close they are three to four kilometers away they are far okay so probably there are two categories here close and far based on that you can analyze okay now they also have the salary which the people get there okay and this is not exact this is a survey data so it will be lump sum so okay, 47,000 66,000 something like this so and then another variable they have is children whether they have that family have a children or not okay History, I, I like. I don't. History is basically high low. It it seems like how many customers have visited. Are they a customer of pantaloons or not? Okay, this is a very important variable. You will understand this. So if it is high, so it says yeah, they they are they are customer of pantaloons. Low means they have not come to pantaloons. Medium they have come very, but not that frequently. Okay, and then catalogs is. I, this is a variable I don't understand. I'll, that's why I'll not use it. Okay. And when they came, how, what amount they spent? Okay. So these are the variables. So I hope you are clear with the variables. Okay. This is a direct marketing variable. So you can consider this. You can take example of any particular uh, firm, company, and like think of it, of it. Now the other prospect of it so we understood the data the other perspective is when a company is promoting okay they do so such a uh, huge effort of collecting data then sending you campaign you get a campaign so you react or not that matters a lot okay and why it matters because the, they are spending amount they are spending bounties so that you receive mail sms's okay that is not free that cost okay now whether you turn or not that will affect they will send you the next campaign or not okay so it's all about selecting uh, that chunk of customer where like you can assume to whom if they campaign they get a maximum return that means maximum people respond to it if they have if they are sending campaign to thousand people so probably 400 500 people should respond okay the actual ratio in the market if you see the in, in, in industry so the, the uh, like uh, percentage of email responder is, is only two to three percent percentage of sms responder is again four to five percent it is very less but yeah they want maximum out of it because they are spending money now if i need to build a model which will tell me whether a, a customer will respond or not that will help to a company right so when they uh, based on this data if we build a model and uh, give it to a pantaloons pantaloons uses this data and they pick only those customers who will respond as per the model let's say 
I build a model so my response variable. It will be one, one, zero, 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 and likewise. Not two. So it is categorical. So one means resp uh, the uh, like customer responded, and two means customer did not respond. It. One means and two means. No response okay so this is it now this is the output and this will be used and this is again a binary output fine now let's go ahead before that let's let's come that and we'll discuss this part train and test data set okay so guys just Keep this thing in mind because this will be very helpful. Now, when you get a data set, this is a data set, and the normal I'm talking about normal industry practice. Okay, when you get a data set, so the data set is divided into two parts. Okay, train set and uh, test set. Now, what is the use of it? First of all, you work in this data set, so this is your base data set. That means you'll use this data, uh, data set to build a model. Okay, you need to validate it as well because testing is a testing or validation is a very core part of it because what you build it should not like in a air you have built it and uh, what will be the output you don't understand or the people or the company who will buy this will not understand. No, you need to validate it. Okay, so that is a validation part and talking about test and train. So when you build a model, you need to test it. Okay, how the responsive it is, how accurate it is. Okay, so that is called validation or test of more testing the model. Okay, so you need to divide this data set into two parts. It, it, it will be a first part will be called test part, the other part will be called train part. Let me come here. So just I'm writing it here the entire data set, the entire data set. The you have the thing which you have the entire data set is divided into two parts. What is that? One is train, and the other is test. Okay, now coming to industry pra industry practice. Okay, in industry, train is basically 70% of the data set, 70% of the data set. And test is generally a thirty percent of the data set. Okay, clear. Now, uh, if you see here, this you have thousand uh, rows, so you can build, you can like split this data set into two parts. Train will have 70, 700 rows and test will have 300 rows. Okay. And there are many theories or there are codes available. You'll see, you'll see a number of codes available how to split data set into train and test in R. Split data set into in R. Or let's say split data set in test and train. Test and train in R. So see you. They are, uh, like just copy this code. This is a very generalized code, and I have used some different code here. Which I'll show you, but but I'll just tell you like the code is very easily available. Uh, you, you take the data set, this is empty car. Okay, so you know, uh, we have seen empty cars a lot. Okay, so if I see how it is the row, how many rows it has.
so it has 32 rows okay now what i'm trying to do is here they are considering 75 percent as a test so they are splitting into 75 okay and 25 okay so let's see so what is the sample size now if i see the uh, let's complete this okay then what what we are doing here is uh, we are converting uh, the data set that is empty car into sample size what is sample size 75 percent so run this and now if you see the count of train and row of train indicator so this will be give you an index okay so let's convert that so uh, this empty car is having train indicator that means 75 percent and then in test what i do is i write minus 75 that means or 25 percent so let's check this too and take a count of it and row train 24 okay now what is how what is the count of test and row test it is 8 so it is divided into 8 uh, 25 percent and 75 percent okay so this is how it is this is very simple and uh, you just need to uh, like take a call if your data set is huge so you go for 70 uh, 60 30 80 20 if the data set is huge if the data set is small okay so uh, you need to decide like on which how many rows you will build a model and how many and how many rows you will use to test the model that's your call okay <clears throat> fine so that is one part train and test you have a base data set then you convert that into train and test so this is done yeah so there is something you see here seed set seed is equal set seed one two three so guys uh, seed is something i'll you can just think of Uh, what is one minute? Yeah, so what I was telling is so if you set, if you don't set, like let's assume this, uh, the example which I which we saw now. Where is that? Yeah, this example. So if I if I keep on uh, like asking for numbers, set dot c. So I got this uh, number. Okay, this set of number following a property of having a mean of ten, uh, meaning of mean of twelve, and count is total count is ten. That means ten. Uh, occurrence you have here and if you plot them in a xy plane you'll get a, a normal distribution okay but you once you rerun it so see the number is changing okay now in order to avoid such numbers uh, from changing in our implementation because in our implementation if the number changes so it will impact the output okay the best example is let's say you use this data set let's see empty cars the very yeah empty cars and you're building a model okay so as we have seen your train set has 24 rows and test set has eight rows and we know that 24 and 8 okay when you build a model so you need to make sure that this 24 remains same that is count wise it, it will always be remaining same because it is not changing but content wise it should remain same okay it should have same set of 24 uh, rows when you build a model and test a model okay because if if it changes the output will change now in order to do this we write set dot seed is equal to any random number that means 
uh, you are changing from any randomness you are avoiding the randomness okay clear i guess it is clear now let's uh, move ahead so we have seen how to split the data set into test and train we have seen one strategy here okay so this is one way there are n number of ways you will see a lot of variety of it okay and the call of what will be the percentage of split into 10 train and test that depends yeah so that depends and what is your size of the data set if you have a huge data set so go for uh, 80 and 20 80 as a train and 20 as test so you you could have asked me this question what is train and what is test okay if you are like it's new to you right so train means you are using that particular set of data set let's say here my train is 24 i have 24 rows in my train data set that means i'll use these 24 rows to build a model okay if, if i'm building a linear a logistic or linear model that means i'll use the 24 rows to build a model i'll get i'll use the uh, like predictors predictor variable that is y and uh, like independent like sorry x i'll use predictor variable i'll use and i'll use the y variable dependent variable okay of this from 24 this rows and then build a model get the equation okay now what is test now you using those equation okay the equation which i got from 24 rows okay i'll just change the data set i'll not use a train that time i'll use the same equation but i'll use the test data set and then i'll see how is the accuracy is the model performing uh, same uh, with test and train then it is fine okay then we measure the accuracy and we do the cross validation so this is what cross validation is so this topic of cross validation okay we have seen test and train we have seen clustering now let's come to implementation part okay so what we'll do is we'll try and import the data set okay so where is my data set it is here so let me do it we'll copy the path go to our uh, diet marketing so read dot csv paste it yeah the name is diet marketing copy this paste it here okay name is correct right diet marketing yeah just it, uh, use the extension csv okay now we'll we'll have to add one more backslash let because it will give error otherwise no it is fine from back in back it is fine generally when i use it in window okay i need to uh, add because by default it will come like this way when you use in windows so either you need to change the like backslash into forward slash or you can use double like this double slash so in back that is not the issue anyways let's move ahead so i got the data in a uh, variable called dm okay so if i want to see what is there in dm so uh, just let's see view dm okay this is my data set the exact data set which i have shown you in the excel now the question is are you very clear everybody okay are you clear with the uh, variables all the variables okay perfect let's move ahead <clears throat> so if you see if you go back to the data set so there are small some manipulation basically it, it covers the concept which it uses the concept which you have discussed so there there, there is some variables uh, which has zero as zero value 
So let's see. Here you don't see it is zero, but I'll do, just do a small manipulation. Okay, what I'll do here is if I'm just trying to uh, create a perfect data set. Okay, you need to do some data preparation. So it comes into data preparation part. Okay. Data preparation. So what I'm doing is I am checking that if my target variable so target variable is amount spent okay amount spent is your target variable now if i want to check if target variable is like greater than mean of amount spent okay if yes one or, or else zero okay uh, just yeah uh, just try to follow this i'm using a muted function here mutate your target variable i'm creating a target variable which is not there so what will happen here you'll get a new variable called target it is in caps right yeah target okay and so what will be the output output will be one zero one zero something like that because i'm creating a binary variable here one and zero now based on what you'll get one and zero so it will be something like this so if the amount spent let me delete all this thing let me delete all this thing. If you, you can do this in Excel also, there's no big deal. If the amount spent is greater than mean, okay, so the best way will be calculate the mean of it. Average, okay, average of the entire thing. This is your average okay now what will be the uh, output if <coughs> this variable that is your amounts amount spent is greater than <coughs> this then one is zero that is it so you got zero likewise why why you got zero because this is less than mean now if i just drag it and see so you get why oh, everything is one sorry okay sorry this is the video we need to fix this j2 is F4. Okay, then it will work. Sorry. Yeah. So I just uh, I have just fixed this cell. Okay, this was also moving, so I fixed it. Now this is your target variable. Uh, you see, uh, if any variable which is greater than mean. That will be one if any variable which is less than mean that is zero on that basis i'm creating a variable so the same thing i'm doing in r here okay target new variable else if amount spent greater than mean mean of amount spent then one is zero okay fine so <clears throat> clear i guess it is clear the variable creation now i'll use this variable to do my modeling select so what what is there in your dm now you have a new uh, data set you have the existing data set let, let me do the head of it that you will understand head dm okay so you have this data set and i have removed the amount spent because amount spent is something will which i'll use okay this this data set i've converted into a target okay i'll not use this data set anymore because this is the output variable so i i'll use this target variable let me let me
again. Yeah. So this is my new variable, new data set. I just what I did was I based on my requirement, I converted the amount spent into one and zero. Okay. And the condition was if it is greater than zero, it will be one or less than zero. Okay. Less than uh, mean mean of the entire amount spent will be zero. And if it is greater than it will be one. Okay. Then I actually removed the data set uh, like amount column and I kept this target now this is my x this is my x what you see highlighted one is my x and this particular j column that is target is my y so my data set is created so that's what I, I've done here so DM has all my x that is independent variable fine guys any doubts in the uh, uh, like data set manipulation? This is called data preparation. So any problem in the data data preparation part? So this is what you will do when you when you generally convert. So just to show you the implementation part, and Excel was a good example to show it where I can show it to. You. That's why. But you will do it in. R. and this is a very simple syntax you need to uh, just uh, take the a base data set okay if you want to create a, a new variable that is target we create a variable write a condition amount spent greater than uh, mean then it is one if it is less then it is zero okay and then you, uh, you are assigning it to a new variable called dm okay then from dm you remember the select command of d player we discussed a lot okay I'm I'm just subtracting amount spent. That means I am selecting all the columns, but I'm removing amount spent column. Okay, and then the, uh, my variable DM gets manipulated, updated, and I have only all the X. It, I do not have any Y. So Y is target variable. I have removed that. Okay, so just check of uh, check ahead of it, and you see you get all the X. Fine. Now. You remember uh, what is what was the initial check that we need to do we need to check if we have a missing values or not okay data variable creation is done now if in case anything is missing that is you have any let's check it in excel let's say if you search for any you have one NAC here so there is a lot of NAs you can see and any we will have to treat it okay so what I'm doing is see first we'll have to know which in which column you have NAs. So you see one one column we have you have identified which has lots of NAs that is history. Okay. Now let's check on other columns if they have any. No, they don't have any. Okay. So the reason why I checked is because there are some columns which is numerical. So uh, let's say this is numerical. If this has NAs or this is again numerical it's categorical numeric okay so if they have any so probably we'll have to remove it with a missing uh, mean or something but if this columns like which is categorical and string it's it is nominal or ordinal kind of thing so we'll have cannot do mean of 10 marriage or 10 single to get some other marriage or single no so you have to remove it with a change uh, change it with some other value okay that is the concept so here since our history column is having an a so we'll have to remove that change that variable okay with, from any to any thing so what i did is i removed this with missing i just replaced all na with missing okay so am i uh, yeah you'll get missing everywhere where you get any you'll get missing so that r does not throw unexpected value as output okay fine so this is what i did again if else condition is that any that means if you uh, how to how do we check any if a row has a any or not column has any or not is dot any is a command so is dot any dm dollar history if you have missing like if just replace it with missing if it is true okay just let let's try and run it let's see how it looks now you have i'm just checking the summary of history 
history column and what is the value it has so it give you distinct it will group it of uh, like value wise how many value it has so it has 255 miss uh, high 230 low 212 medium and 303 missing so earlier it was na so if i check with history which was there earlier so i get 303 na's so uh, removing 303 na's is not a logical thing i'll come into that now okay but just see the difference so earlier it was 303 missing value I wrote a small command where I replaced all NAs with missing and now this is a state. Okay. Now you can you can come up with this argument that why we are if the value is missing, why we are considering it, we should remove it straight away. Yeah, we can do it. Okay. When your data size is data size in, is in million, okay. You want at multiple millions, like 10 millions or 12 millions, okay, and then you find that your uh, 300 rows or 500 rows ha is having missing uh, value okay you can straight away remove it because you have a huge data set okay but since our data set is small we have we are dealing with only 1000 rows removing 300 that is 30 percent of it is not a logical decision okay should not do it okay that is the reason i'm trying to manipulate so this covers one concept which you can remember okay now Uh, this is done replace all i just do a counter of all activities in excel so that you understand well yeah so leave it now let's come here now a few variables if i see the structure okay the structure of my data set Of my DM, so I see uh, maximum variables is a uh, are already have imported it as a factor. So as I said, factor is very good to work with, and basically when you work in logistic regression, so factor is like too good to work with. Okay, and uh, we generally, if the variables are categorical and it is not a factor, we forcefully convert it into a factor. That's what we'll we'll do it. Okay, so we see like. Uh, there are a few variables which are factor there are a few variables which are integers and again a factor integer and factor okay so the the variable which we have replaced with the missing value we have replaced so that is a, already a factor now two variables that is children and catalog we see is not a factor is an integer guys can you uh, have a uh, are you able to locate it the highlighted portion the highlighted portion says children variable children column is integer okay it, it is integer i accept it but see how many types of very values it, it attends okay it takes only few values 0 1 2 and 3 okay so considering as it has integer and building a model will be a little expensive okay so the best the best practice will be since the variety is less convert that into a factor and that factor will have how many labels it will have only four labels right how many types of variable 0 1 2 3 it will have four labels so that's what i'm doing i'm converting the children variable into a factor as dot factor so let's do it so how do we do this simple as dot factor and the va variable name which you want to convert okay run this fine now uh, again i'm converting a catalog variable catalog variable again has 6 12 18 24 four variables four types of variables okay so we'll convert this as well fine so we had only two variables which was on which were not factor i've converted that into a factor now let's check the structure of data set now it is all factored okay now there's only one variable salary which is continuous okay because it has it is integer it is continuous so let let's let let it be a continuous variable for now as of now okay then coming to our concept of split test in test and train so if it is difficult to understand the concept of set dot seed okay 
so just keep this thing in mind whenever you are converting a data set into test and trade it's preferable to use seed okay first set the seed and the significance of this number is you can use any random number here okay one two three two hundred eight hundred okay just make sure whatever number you use here and if you need to set a seed again in like below code you want to set set a seed again don't use 200 use some other number let's use 250 or 300 okay don't use the same seed because that seed already you have used in making this as constant okay now here i'll use 70 percent as my split uh, test and train so i'm using some other code here just see here so there are a number of ways so basically i'm using sample so sample is a r function so if you want to know more about sample just write sample okay you'll get some documents like oh what is sample and how, how do we use it so 70 percent train and test so we total we have thousand rows so if i convert that into train so my it will uh, train will have 700 probably okay and my test will have 300 and row test fine that that's what is expected now let's move ahead now straight away i have did i did my missing value treatment i did my data preparation i converted all the variables into factor so my target is whether a person will spend what amount they will spend based on like visiting data okay so fine so let's we'll come here let's go back to the data set now you are building a model here okay so this is the existing data set i have this is a data set which i got from the company and it is an existing data set okay so obviously this data set the event has already occurred but what i'm trying to do is based on the previous trend this is a previous data i'm trying to predict the upcoming event so now if i build this model and give this to let's say pantaloons again okay so pantaloons will see how many people the model predicts will spend more than the average value that is one okay and it sees yeah there are a huge number of people there are around 400 people who will spend more than average of what they have spent uh, earlier okay so likewise they they can prepare themselves like they can uh, take a precautionary measure they can keep a good stock okay so this is what i mean is this already has occurred but based on the previous trend or previous historical occurrence they they will like take a precautious measure for upcoming days okay that's the use of this model okay so target is your one or zero that is your uh, y and you i have taken all the data points so uh, you have taken the trade i'm using binomial so there are two three methods of uh, in lossy direction so there are logit probit binomial so i'm using binomial okay so then i what oh, is target is not found Okay, so let's be, let me. Have I not run the code? Oh, let me. Yeah, so I got the target now. So that time I did not run the code. Okay, so I'll build a model. So where target, 
uh, OI tends to all the variable I've taken. Okay, and uh, just stepwise, I, stepwise regression I'll try. Okay, so last time also what we saw, I've not given a name of it, but it was a stepwise. So stepwise is basically you do what you run the model, you see the output. Okay, based on that output, uh, you remove the insignificant, insignificant variable, you again run the model. Okay, then again you see the output, you remove the insignificant variable. Likewise, stepwise step you do. So this is called stepwise regression. Okay. Now let me run the model again. Target dot. There are yeah. So I'll run it again. I have a target variable here. So where the target variable is getting lost is okay. Fine. So so this is uh, this is what I did a mistake. So this is deleting the eighth column. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The tenth variable. Let's not do this, but check what you have in DM. Your target variable here. Set the CD next test in. Then what you see in test. So in, te in train and test, I see target variable is there. In test also have target variable. Now let's move ahead. So target is caps. What is your ninth column? Okay. So when I build a model, so I'm what I'm taking. I'm taking a train. So what is my, I mean, I'm trying to remove the ninth column. What is my ninth column? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth. Uh, trying to remove the ninth column. No, I'll not remove it. First of all, let's, let's uh, take the entire data set. Okay. I'll take the entire data set. Probably I can remove the history column because this, this will not impact, but still, since it is a first run. So take the, take all the variable. Okay. And run this and see the output. So the output, how we see, we see how many variables it came to be significant. So there are decent number of variables which are significant. So what are they? So they are catalog they have converted. So the one which have not converted is location, married, single, all that. So now let's remove some very insignificant variables. Okay. And then Yeah, so I have, I have simply first, this is my first run. Okay, and I'm going to adopt stepwise regression. So in stepwise regression, you step by step, you try and choose the significant variable, and then finally conclude which, vari which variables are the set of variables 
to consider in the model and then you finally build a model okay so that's a stepwise integration so initially i'm starting with all the variables that i have okay then based on what is significant and insignificant so this is star so if the variable if out from the in, like in front of the variable you see there's some uh, three stars that is that variable is that variable is significant variable okay and the variables where you don't get star that is insignificant variable symbol okay now now uh, i saw this now there are there are ways where i get see here so i did simple step mode so this is shortcut okay where uh, it will automatically run all the models like by uh, logit and pro, uh, binomial and logit okay and you'll give it will get the output remove that like let's let's consider the important one so now i'll i'll not take all the variables i'll take the important variables okay uh, the variables which which i got star for okay and then i'll build a model and then i'll see how is the performance again i'll check for star so i see once i choose a particular variable like all the significant variables from the last session and then i see yeah the number of stars number of significant variables has increased okay then again i saw summary okay then i can there's a need here if you see children one children two children three catalog 12 18 so that means the factor which we converted that is get converted that is getting considered as a variable here one variable children one children two children three okay so that means if you see the excel children there's three values of children one two three okay so it is getting converted as a variable different variable so you can treat it okay or you can, if you want if you want to treat it and use it like this way so it's your like you need to understand a lot understand means like you have to once you interpret your model you have to take a lot of effort so i'm just simply creating a dummy variable so dummy variable what it will do so i have a look here it has three values zero it has four values zero one two and three so dummy variable will insert one more how many categories it has if i ask you four categories so number of categories it will get inserted here as a column like this so okay one was already there so let's delete one oh, sorry So what will happen? Children one, children two, children three, children four. Okay. So if it is one, in all the places where it is one, it will it will take one as a uh, value, and rest it will be zero. Let, let's say here it is one, and everywhere it will be zero. Like this, it is one here. Let it be. So this is a dummy very value creation. So this particular children one will only be for all the children where you have one as value. So similarly here you'll get all the children, uh, only the value where you have two as children. So basically for each category I'm creating one column. That is it. Okay, this is called dummy value creation. Okay. So what is the syntax? So syntax is if I again if else if age is young. Okay, so I've, I've showed it to you on children, but you can uh, I'm creating it for age as well. If it is young, then give one as zero. Then again history medium one. So I'm converting all the variables into dummy variables. All the categorical variable into dummy variables. So the number of column will increase. Let's complete this example so that you understand well. So children two. So wherever you have two as value, so that will take 
this will come here in this value, uh, column. So where is two? Yeah. So you will get value two here. Again, you have two here. So two, two. Rest everything will be zero. Okay. Now come to third column. So third column, wherever you have three. So you have three here. So three will occur here. You have three. Three will occur here. Okay. And it goes on. This column is specifically for ch four children. So all the so best way to do this is filter the rows. Three. So this entire thing will be three. Okay, then you filter it for one, filter it for two. So this all rows will be two. Okay, and the rest of the values will be zero. Fine. So this is dummy value creation, and similar. Uh, likewise, I'm doing it for all the categorical variable. I'm doing for married. I'm doing for age. I already did for children here. So that's and uh, since in Excel it is very tedious to do this conversion. So I'll go for uh, normal R code. So it is very simple. I just check if else age is young. Okay. If this is young, if we have young here. convert the entire thing into one and for all the values all the values means that the remaining um, old and middle give zero okay then for history history one medium for medium one rest zero for children if it is two then one rest zero so why i'm doing this so if you see so here what is children one it is not significant so no use so i have to select all those variables which appear to be significant here and convert that into a dummy variable okay so this variable selection will come from your initial step first step or second step and which variable you need to convert into dummy okay now you see children 2 why children 2 because children 2 here appear to be significant okay and the what is second second value in children go here so you see first second so second value is 1 Okay, one appear to be significant. So I'm trying to convert that into dummy variable. Okay, then children three also appears to be significant. Okay, and then you see a history medium is appeared to be significant. So I'm converting medium into dummy variable. So all the variables which which automatically got splitted into dummy here. Okay, it's your just to make it model work better. Okay, uh, this is this is also good. This is no, uh, not bad. Uh, the output will not differ a lot but this is the best practice i'm telling you okay if now if someone asks you how on what basis you are converting a variable into a dummy variable okay that that's your question i guess and that is general question people ask okay so you say in a take example of logistic regression and tell like when i in a stepwise log, logistic regression i implemented a logistic regression okay in the first step i got few variables at uh, variable as significant variables and among them few were categorical variables which splitted themselves as a, a variable and few of them appeared to be significant so i converted that few significant variable into dummy variable and that's what exactly i'm doing here okay i saw that medium appeared to be significant and that model said that history one history one okay so that appeared to be significant medium see history one medium appeared to be significant because you have three star so i converted only that into a 
dummy variable correct then uh, children 2 i found significant then children 3 i found significant age young i found significant see here age young i found significant okay likewise so quickly and the code is very simple i'll convert them all okay and then i'll use this variable which i created now as a dummy variable in my model see here all those variables that i've created children to history mid age in my variable and i will not use the original variables because this dummy variables uh, or the variable which uh, was stored here is significant and that can be used for predicting the target variables now i'll use it i'll see the summary so i'll get all the variables which i used appear to be significant and this is a best fit okay when you get all the variables as significant so we call that variable as a best fit okay so this is perfect and then my model is ready so my equation is here my equation is this that appears in mod 2 my modeling stuff is done now you know like i used train data set see here i used train data set to predict my build my model okay now your model is built yeah so your model is built okay and we use um, you, we have used train data set okay now what we are left with is we are still left with the test data set that we used that we uh, created okay 30 percent of the entire data set so i guess here is no no problem so my equation is mod 2 now you need to use this equation and your test data okay to predict the output so we use pred function okay this is a pred function predict predict is your uh, function which is used to predict the uh, like you predict the value based on the new data set and the existing equation so my existing equation lies in mod 2 okay then i'll just use a test data set see here i use a test data set and then i run the model and see what is the prediction so prediction is this so uh 0.5 percent i uh, i get five occurrence okay 0 0.8 per uh, like 0 0.8 is a probability i got eight probability i get eight times this this is very low probability i get nine times and likewise okay now i convert that into a tabular format and see so what why i'm doing in tabular format i want to see like uh, how many uh is getting one and no one and zero that is what my aim is and on what basis i'm doing less than zero less than 0.5 as one greater than 0.5 as zero okay so sorry this is like detail of it so you can this this is where this is advanced testing this is not used that much but this tabular format what it gives you okay in target versus the, the like the one you predicted okay and the original what it has so it gives a comparison okay how many times it, it is you know, getting zero and how many times it is what is the probability of getting zero and what is the probability of getting one okay so i guess uh, this you must have understood to some extent but once you go through it okay so it will help a lot